In this video, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Eve racial profile. So the different general stereotypes we have about the different races in EVE Online. This video is more targeted at newer players and people new to PvP. So if you've been playing for a long time, you might want to skip this video. But if you're new to the game or you're just getting started in PvP and want to know a little bit more about the races of EVE Online, then this is a good video. It's going to be pretty quick and it's going to go over just the bare general assumptions we have about the various races in EVE. We're going to go over the strengths, the weaknesses, their likely damage output, what kind of damage are they putting onto you, are they shooting at you, also their likely damage hole, what's the, the weakest resist they have, what's the best thing to shoot at them to try to kill them quickly, and then maybe a little bit of talk about the preferred tactics when dealing with these races. So first up, I'm going to let you guess, I have to click first. All right. First up is, I mean, I wonder what the, this race is. I tried to find a picture for each one. So tons of shields, right? Tons of shields. That's actually a Roman testudo formation from the Roman army. And it's Caldari. So Caldari is known primarily as a shield tanking race. They typically bonus shield resist over shield boost amount, which would be Mimitar who boost shield boost amount. Kaldari is more likely to fit a buffer shield tank, so high effective hit points or EHP, which, mean, which means there's just tons of hit points you have to work through on that shield before you work through it. A couple quick things to note about shield tanking. This is a very brief, brief overview, so there's a lot more depth there if you want to do some research. There's different types of shield tanking. There's active which is you run a shield booster or an ancillary shield booster ASB there's passive in which you can do one of two things you can have a passive buffer or hit points tank which is just tons of hit points that's typical in PvP if you're gonna go with a PvP passive tank it's more likely to go with a buffer or what you'll see in missions a lot and in some very niche parts of PvP is a passive recharge tank Passive recharge tanks are a little bit complicated for this, but basically what they are is that your shields have a built-in amount of recharge and how fast they recharge. And if you tweak the amount of shields with the recharge rate and you do enough modules, you can get that recharge to be right at around 30% shield because that's where your peak is, is roughly 30% of your shield. You can get that peak recharge to be as good as, and in many cases better, than an active tank and it takes no capacitor, no active modules. Um, it works fantastically well for missions, which is the old school mission drake. Um, and why the old school mission drake worked so well is you never had to touch the tank and it would tank pretty much everything you came across. So Kaldari is about shield tanking. It's very, very rare to find a Kaldari ship that's an armor tank. I'm not saying it's impossible, they do exist. I've seen them, I've flown them, but you will very rarely see a Kaldari ship with an armor tank. So that's a big thing. You can very safely assume if it's Kaldari, it's a shield tank. Next up is missiles. So missiles are good for a few things and they, they're also they have their ups and downs. So what's good about missiles is the next thing, damage projection. So with missiles you can project your damage out to very very far ranges and it doesn't matter so much about the target's transversal velocity as much as the target's total velocity. So when missiles come into effect, it's they get past a lot of the things that hurt turret-based guns like hybrids or uh, auto cannons or lasers. So whenever you're using missiles, you're guaranteed a hit so long as they're within range. It's just sometimes that hit may not be very good if they're too small or their overall speed is too fast. Um, generally, there's a lot more to that. So, depending on which missiles you use, you have very good damage projection. So to give you an example, Galante will be using blasters up close in a frigate fight, most likely. Those blasters aren't gonna be very good past one, two, three K um, kilometers unless they have a longer range ammo, which is rare. Sometimes they will use null, but that's very rare. So as a even a short range rocket K 
Kaldari pilot, you're able to keep out of their range while still maintaining them inside your rocket range. And so even though their peak DPS or damage output is higher than yours, as a Kaldari pilot, if you play it right, you can avoid 90% of their damage while still applying 90 to 100% of your damage to them. It's a big advantage for Kaldari to have that damage projection. It also helps in missions because in missions, being able to sit in one place and apply damage across the entire grid is very helpful. So when it comes to damage output, it really varies pretty heavily with Kaldari. Their bonuses tend to be for kinetic missile damage, but there's they've CCPs came back off that a little bit in the uh, recent years, and they've started to make it a little bit more up to the pilot. You can put whatever damage type missiles you want into a ship. So in general, if there's a bonus, it's going to be kinetic. And if there's a bonus for kinetic, that ship's probably going to use it. You can always right-click show info on the ship before you fight them and see if they have a kinetic, uh, kinetic bonus. Very few pilots are going to purposefully go away from that kinetic bonus to try to find the right damage type. They're going to stick with whatever gives them the most damage on paper, even though it may not be the best thing for that fight they're about to engage in. So that's a, that's a pretty safe assumption is kinetic when they have the kinetic bonus. But you have to make sure they do because not all ships have that bonus. So if they don't have that bonus, then the likely damage output is going to be EM or thermal from their missiles. But we need to keep in mind that Kaldari can also fit hybrid turrets. That means they can fit rail guns and they can fit blasters. So in some cases, you've got to take that into account, and that's going to go on a ship-by-ship -ship basis. You're going to have to learn those ships. You're going to have to learn that the Caracal is going to be missiles, the Moa is going to be guns. Um, the Hawk is going to be missiles, the Harpy is going to be guns. Things like that. And with experience, you will learn those things. So if it's going to be guns, then it, you you can look at the missile, the, the, you can look at the turrets to find out whether or not they're rail guns or blasters. But in general, most people will opt for the blasters in PvP. There are some people, maybe 30% of the time, who will go with rail guns as a Kaldari pilot in PvP. But that's much more common in fleet PvP. So if you see rail guns, then you're more than likely about to get blobbed because very few solo pilots will fit rail guns in general. So of course, all this is just very general. So for most Kaldari ships, not all, but pretty much most, you're safe using EM or thermal as your damage that you're going to do to them. That's their damage hole. Now, EM is so often a hole that most Kaldari pilots all will plug it in every ship they have pretty much. They'll try to boost that EM hole up because they know most people they fight will shoot for that hole. And so it's, it's to a Kaldari pilot's advantage in PvP to make other people waste a lot of their damage shooting a higher resist than they anticipate. Which is why often when I fight against a Kaldari ship, unless it's Tech 2, because the Tech 2 one's um, it's a little bit different, but in general, when I fight against a Kaldari ship, I'll go with thermal damage if I have the choice. But EM is always a good choice too. Um, if the hole's open, you'll kill them really fast because shields are very weak to EM damage. But if the hole's closed, then you're going to struggle in some cases. Next up, big, huge railgun. So let's call that a blaster and not a railgun, although technically it's a railgun from the Transformers movie. Galante. So Galante are all about high damage output. They're all about doing tons of damage up close in general. They can fight at range, they can use rail guns and be very good at them, but for the most part, especially in solo PvP and often in fleet PvP as well, you run into a Galante ship and it's going to be blasters, not rail guns. Short range, not long range. Now some fleets will use rail guns because Oftentimes, it's better to be able to get the entire fleet to do damage to a target instantly without having to chase it down. And therefore, there are many fleet concepts that will use railguns instead of blasters. But if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, very good bet that it's going to be blasters and not railguns. But 
as always, there are exceptions. Like the railgun Tyrannus is very viable. The railgun Comet, the railgun um, Comoron. That's not Galante. The railgun Catalyst. Okay. Um, so high damage output is very common. These the Galante ships are some of the highest damage output ships in the game. Um, they are not the highest technically, but they are as a whole very high damage output. The Galante. Um, that's kind of what they do well, is they put out a lot of firepower. That firepower is almost always kinetic thermal because they use antimatter ammo, which is kinetic primary, mostly kinetic, and then some thermal. So Galante is going to typically be armor tanked. There are some shield tanks, but 80 to 90% of the time, a Galante ship's going to be armor tanked. If it's armor tanked, then I would say it's about 50-50 with active armor tank or buffer armor tank. The active armor tank often has bonuses and those bonuses give you more rep per cycle. So on a lot of the Galante ships they can get very strong active armor tank um, after active armor tanks and some of those ships are a lot of fun to fly because they can just tank incredible amounts of damage um, and it's a lot of fun to see that fight of the the armor dropping and then shooting right back up. That's a fun way to fly, although it's it's pretty difficult to pull off because there's a lot of micromanagement involved in that. Galante are pretty much king of the drones as well. Amar challenges them in some areas, but Galante can pretty safely say that they are the drone kings of Eve. So the Galante have the Vexer, the Galante have the Algos, they have the Dominix, they have the Vexer Navy issue, the, the Ishtar. Um, am I forgetting anything? I don't know. So they have a lot of good drone boats that have bonuses to drone hit points, drone damage output, um, drone speed in some cases where the drones go super fast. Um, so watch for those ships. Um, did I mention the Vexer before? I don't know. Anyway, so those ships are going to have drone damage output and the tactics you use against a drone ship are very different than the tactics you use against a turret ship. In most cases when you're up against drones your best bet is to shoot the drones unless you're up against a ship that has relatively weak tank. So if you're in a cruiser shooting at a frigate you should just shoot the frigate. Don't shoot the frigate's drones. Um, it's going to be a lot faster to, to kill him than it is going to be to kill all of his drones, then kill him. And time is often survivability in EVE. So the longer you're fighting, the more likely you are to get blobbed. Damage output for Galante are going to be kinetic thermal for their turrets. Like I said before, antimatter, faction antimatter, primarily kinetic damage, secondary thermal damage. If their drones um, are in the picture, sadly almost everyone uses the Galante drones, which are thermal damage output. The reason they do that is because they have the highest damage on paper. That doesn't mean they have the highest real damage in a fight. So I like to, even as a Galante, when I'm flying Galante um, in a drone boat, I like to carry very different sets of drones. So I'll often carry some Amar drones because they've got their own upside I'll carry some Galante and I'll carry some Mimitar. Very rarely I'll carry some Kaldari drones depending on the situation or where I'm flying. Where you're flying has a big impact on what types of damage you want to do. If you're flying in an area where the rats are very weak to let's say explosive then you know if, I probably said that wrong. Different regions have different strengths and weaknesses and people typically fit for the rats of those regions if they're out ratting and if you're killing ratters you can get a big edge so let me think of an example if you're fighting in a region where garistas are the rats then I'm pretty sure explosive is a good damage to do to the people who are tanking for garistas because the people tanking for garistas are tanking for EM and thermal I think it's actually, actually thermal and EM and I'm doing all this from memory I don't have notes thermal and EM and therefore anyone trying to tank for a Garista's site is going to leave their explosive hole wide open. Um, 
similarly that works in several other cases too but I can't give you all the examples now because my brain's freezing up so damage hole for Galante typically going to be explosive especially if they're armor tanked um, very rarely will you go wrong using an explosive damage against the Galante ship. There are exceptions, but most of the time, Galante explosive damage. So, this one, SR-71, it's a beautiful, beautiful plane, super fast. I think it's a good metaphor for Mimitar. Mimitar are the best at going fast. They excel in flexibility and they have, it's hard to put them into a box because Mimitar can both armor tank and shield tank. They can use guns and they can use missiles. Mimitar is a very flexible race which is why they have always been a favorite among uh, solo PvPers and pirates is because Mimitar is very very flexible. There's a lot of things you can do with a Mimitar ship and it makes them harder to predict. So some of the faster Mimitar ships out there are going to be like the Vagabond, the Firetail's very fast, the Dramiel's not quite Mimitar, but almost. It's also extremely fast. Um, the Stiletto is very fast, Stabber's very fast. Um, even their battleships are decent speed. And you can get uh, a Mimitar battleship, and I forget which one it was, but I used to take it on battlecruiser rooms because it had the same agility as the other battlecruisers. And back then, that was before the warp speed changes. So everything warped at the same speed back then, um, or mostly. So I could take that battleship and fly with all the other battlecruisers and keep up with them on the roam. I was able to align as fast as they were. I was able to warp as fast as they were. And my battleship could do a lot more damage and tank a lot more DPS. So it was actually the, the better ship to bring. So when it comes to their damage output, it's going to be projectile or missile. That's going to be something you're going to have to learn. But in general, there's a preference in Minmatar towards the projectiles, the autocannons and the artillery. Now, whether you're going to be fighting autocannon or artillery, that's very, very, very unknown. There are very good tactics for using artillery, which is going to be heavily based on volley damage. So there's times when maybe you're going to dock at a station in 0, zero or even in Jita, and maybe in Jita you've got a uh, suspect or a criminal timer, and you're going to get one shot. And that's somebody sitting on the undock, likely with the Loki, and artillery cannons. Artillery cannons are great. Um, if you look at my website and check out the Artie Thrasher Guide, um, as well as the Artie Svapel guide, Insta Lock, Insta Pop Svapel, then you'll see that with artillery, you can lock a target and put one shot oftentimes and blow that target up, and one single shot in a split second before they can react. That's pretty powerful in PvP. Now, most of the time, it's going to take two or three, or you're going to have to have two or three of those Artie ships there. <clears throat> but there's a lot of potential for high alpha, high volley, um, instant on damage for, our, for artilleries. <clears throat> Auto cannons don't take any capacitor. That's really their best attribute. They don't require capacitor. They have pretty decent tracking and they have variable damage outputs. So for a blaster you've got antimatter and then anything else you choose you're going to take a hit in your damage output. So very few people will stray from faction antimatter in PvP with a hybrid turret, unless they're using a Tech 2 ammo. With auto cannons, you can use Republic Fleet EMP, Republic Fleet Phase Plasma, which is thermal damage, EMP is EM, um, or Republic Fleet uh, Fusion, which is e uh, explosive damage. So you have those three that are solid. You could also do kinetic if you want, but it's really not worth it. Um, so you can do any damage type you want for the same basic damage output as a Mimitar pilot. That's pretty powerful to have that ability to choose. Whenever you have the ability to choose your damage output, you have an advantage because then you can set your ship up to prey upon the weaknesses of your enemy ship and give yourself an advantage. The damage hole, it depends on whether or not they're a shield tank or an armor tank. So if it's a shield tank, it's going to be EM or thermal. Either one, it could be either. Um, Thermal is usually a safe bet. I like thermal because thermal 
is going to go through armor better than EM. So once you get through their shield, you'll go through their armor a little bit faster. For armor tanks, explosive is almost always going to be the best choice for a Mimitar ship. And I'll let you guess what the gold brick is. It's Amar. So Amar, the uh, imperial golden race of Eve, um, golden ships, big, heavy armor tanks, typically very slow, high, high effective hit points, um, almost always armor tanked, but not always. There are a few exceptions, but very likely to be armor tanked. They have lasers, which are incredibly flexible. While you can't change the damage output, the damage type, whether it be EM, thermal, kinetic explosive, you can't really change that very much, but what you can do is you can change your range very quickly. So a good example of that would be fighting up close with Imperial Navy multi-frequency, and then the target starts to kite you and move out of your range. Maybe he moves out to eight kilometers, and so you say, I'm gonna switch to my uh, Scorch, and you switch to Scorch, you can switch in a second. You don't have to wait the 10 seconds like you do with every, every other race and every other type of, um, type of weapon and you switch instantly to Scorch. Scorch is an awesome, awesome ammo. The best Tech 2 ammo in the game arguably. It's got great damage output and great range for a pulse laser. Beam lasers have great range but there are a lot of arguments to be made for just using pulse, pulse with Scorch instead of beam lasers because beam lasers take up a lot of power grid and their tracking is pretty crappy. Um, so very rarely are beam lasers a good idea. There are some cases, but very rarely are beams smart in PvP. Most of the time it's going to be pulse lasers, and pulse lasers have good damage output and good range flexibility, but their tracking isn't the best. So a lot of times people are going to get under your guns and you're going to struggle to hit them because they'll be too fast. Therefore, being able to dictate range, control range through the use of scram web, afterburner, whatever, um, or even, you know, let's say an Omen Navy micro warp drive, and then pulse lasers with uh, Scorch, you dictate range by going really fast with a micro warp drive, you know, which says that they're not always slow. That's why I didn't put it as a trait that they're slow, because they're not always slow. There are several of our ships that are very fast the slicer, the uh, Omen Navy issue, the Zealot can be very fast. Um, so there's definitely some exceptions to that rule. So another interesting thing about Amar, which is probably the best thing about them in my opinion, is Capacitor Warfare. Capacitor Warfare is Nazis, um, which Nosferatu's, they suck capacitor, and energy neutralizers or newts that just kill capacitor, make it go away. Um, capacitor warfare is incredibly powerful in EVE and it's incredibly underused thankfully because it's a real pain in the butt for someone to cap, for someone to newt you. That's why I personally think the Pilgrim is the best PvP ship in the game. Best solo PvP ship without question is for several reasons but the amount of cap warfare that can come from that one ship is phenomenal. The curse is better but the curse can't cloak. So those two things right there make it a just devastatingly powerful ship in the right hands. You've got to know when to fight and not, when not to is the the real key there. So so many ships in this game require capacitor to operate. Even Mimitar ships that say have autocannons are still likely to require capacitor to run their micro warp drives, their tanks, whether they're shield or armor, they're probably going to need capacitor to run it. And so once you have someone's capacitor dead, they're, all their plans just go out the window and they are in big trouble. Even if they're still applying damage. Let's say that they're a missile boat and they're still applying damage to you, but they have no way to hold you there. They have no way to control their range. And if they're active tank, they have no way to continue tanking and so they die a lot faster. So Cap Warfare from Amar is very powerful. The Curse, the Pilgrim, the Sentinel, the Armageddon, and 
I think that's all that I can think of that are strictly cap warfare. The Arbitrator's often cap warfare, although I don't believe it has any bonuses. There's the... What's the Destroyer? Dragoon, somewhat. Um, but, yeah, mostly the ones you're going to see, the Curse, the Pilgrim, the Armageddon, and a little bit of the Sentinel. So those are the ones that are most common. They are all drone boats with newts as the theme. Drone boats with newts. Very powerful and um, pretty solid and hard to defeat. Now, they can be defeated. There are, there are counters to those things. If they can't lock you, they can't newt you. So ECM is a counter. Um, more EC, more newt, over newt them is a counter. And then passive DPS and lots of it. So very high DPS missiles is one way to beat a newting ship. Um, high levels of drone DPS. So their drones are hurting you so bad that you have to leave. That's another way. So there are ways to defeat a curse or a pilgrim, but most people aren't prepared for that situation. So like I said, some of them are drone boats. Damage output, their lasers are going to be EM first, then thermal. So EM mostly, then some thermal. Their damage hole is very, very different depending on the ship, depending on Tech 1, depending on Tech 2. All these races have very different setups for Tech 1 and Tech 2. You can still draw some generalities on most of them. For Amar, it's very difficult. Even though they are armor tanked, they typically don't have really big explosive holes. So it's not hard for an Amar ship to have an outstanding explosive resist. And many of them will have that right from the start. So explosive usually isn't the best choice for an Amar ship. Thermal is a safe fallback and like I say to many newer pilots that I train if you don't know what to shoot shoot thermal because in general thermal damage output is going to be a good choice whether they're shields or armor it's a good I don't know, let's just do something that's probably not going to be their best resist. Very few ships in this game have thermal as their highest resist. There are some, but that's probably your best overall damage type to do. That said, don't get lazy and rely on thermal when there's a better option. All right, with that, that's the entire uh, the video. No more slides. I uh, hope you liked it. We'll just go through them real, real quick one more time if this thing will let me. Gold bricks, Mimitar. That's an awesome plane right there. When I was a kid, that was my favorite plane. Amazing. Galante, awesome huge guns. Caldari, Testudo. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Um, leave some comments. Let me know what you thought about this and if you have any questions.